Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, Lord, never tell scripture means when it says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, cause yourself to be strong in him and in the power of his might. So we want to go before the Lord in prayer. We certainly do want to remember Sister Charlene. The Lord will touch her body uh, and take her through this surgery. Bring her out more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. And we want to certainly pray for Christian ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church and all churches everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. And we uh, thank God for our young brother that got baptized in the name of Jesus on Sunday. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless him, and strengthen him, and give him all that he needs, and fill him with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Uh, are there any particular uh, prayer requests? Can you pray for Mr. Brady? He had an injection in his knee. Yes. All right. We'll pray for him. Last night of church cancer. Yes, my Lord. Was it a steroid? Yes. And let's pray for Minister Brady that the Lord will touch his body. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And give him the strength that he needs to continue on. Uh, these old bodies we were talking about a little earlier, uh, they break down on you. You know, but uh, the Lord is able to build them back up. So we, let us pray. He's the physician. Amen. He's the great physician. So we certainly will pray and make that request known. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So as we uh, get ready to pray, uh, let us pray for the success of our Bible study on today that there be something said and done to encourage us and to inspire our hearts. Amen. So let it be our pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come to you, Lord, we come thanking you and praising you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you have blessed each and every soul, blessed each and every person that is here on today, and even those that are in our virtual areas. We ask, Lord, that you bless by your power, by your might, that something be said and done to encourage us and to inspire our hearts in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on today. Remember those that we requested prayer for, that you sent forth healing, that you sent forth deliverance in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said in your word that you are a very present help in the time of trouble. 
And we need you, Lord, to be present with us right now to manifest your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to uh, finish up our series on uh, today. Uh, we were talking about what doth the Lord require of thee. What the Lord requires of thee. And our base scripture came out of the book of Micah, chapter number 8. And our first week that we spoke, uh, that scripture says, He has shown thee, uh, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee. And notice he said, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. And uh, the Lord, he truly is with the righteous. The Lord is with the righteous. Psalms uh, 14, uh, 15, yet 14 in verse number 5, the latter part of that uh, uh, clause, the B clause, tells you that the Lord is with the righteous. And no matter what the children of God experience, no matter what the children of God go through, God has promised never to leave you nor to forsake you. Even in, when a person is dead in their trespasses and sin, the Lord will never forsake them in, even in that because you need his grace, you need his mercy, you need his uh, forgiveness to even to get back uh, into good graces with him. So he, even in a, a, a dead situation, the Lord has promised never to leave you nor to forsake you. And uh, when we think about it, uh, when we think about how to walk with God, and if you can write these particular scriptures down, we won't go over them on tonight, but uh, Psalms 37, it, it declares the righteous way of the Lord, and it tells you how to respond to evil, and, and, and that's key to uh, a child of God's walk. Uh, Psalms 37, it declares the righteous way of God, and it also tells you how to respond to evil. When people do you evil or when evil comes up against you, you have to be able to respond in the proper way, according to God's will. That's what he requires. And when we think about uh, knowing what God requires. Uh, people know the good things that God requires. We should know the good things that God requires. And God is, is, is not interested necessarily in our offerings, but he's interested in our, in our character, in our behavior. Amen. God is more interested in your character and your behavior. That's why if you, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's why tests and trials come. They come to refine your character. They come to expose your character and to refine it to, to, so that you can adjust your behavior. And when I say adjust your behavior, uh, we're in control of our behavior. Whether or not we think we are or not, uh, we have choices. And God wants us to make the best choice all the time. Amen? And he's given us the ability to make the best choice all the time. But what gets in our way is our own rationalization. Sometimes we don't see it uh, the way God sees it. And God is always trying to get, get us in view of his view. And when we can think like him and have his mind and have his spirit, and when I say his spirit, I'm referring to uh, his attitude. When we can have his attitude uh, and have his mind, we can we can do what God has called us to do. That's so important. So important even in today. Uh, when I think about uh, this Bible study and this Bible lesson, it's so it's so applicable because uh, we're living in the last days. We're living in the last times. We're in we got to. It's not a choice. We've got to line our lives up with the will of God. And if your life is lined up with the will of God, you've got to maintain that 
stature. Or you've got to maintain that posture. Amen? It's so necessary. Thank you, Lord. We've come too far by faith. Amen? To give up now. We've come too far to throw in the towel. Uh, the scripture comes to my mind. What profit of a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? And what shall a person give in exchange for his soul? What shall we give in exchange? So as we, uh, just a quick review of our last couple of week lessons, God wants us uh, to do justly. And to do justly, I want you to write this down so you'll have it. To do justly means to act with good reason and sound soundness of mind. To act with good reason and soundness of mind according to God's holy standards. Uh, to do justly means to act with good reason and soundness of mind according to God's holy standards. And what I mean by that is, is it's not enough just to know the scriptures because a lot of people know the scriptures but don't know how and when to apply the scriptures. And, and um, I'm thinking of uh, when Jesus' disciples were, were, were gathering food on the Sabbath and uh, his disciples, uh, Jesus' opponents were coming at him his disciples for gathering food on the Sabbath. And then Jesus, he took them to where David, when his men were hungry, how he, they ate of the shoe bread that was in the temple, which was not lawful for them to eat. And um, they, uh, Jesus was showing them that uh, on one hand, you have to obey God's word and you have to obey it within reason in the sense that uh, it's necessary for us to eat. God would want you to eat as opposed to not eating, sacrificing, and dying when there's food available. You know, God wants you to reverence him. And they, uh, gathering food on the Sabbath and eating on the Sabbath was showing no disrespect to God. They were eating because they were hungry. They were fainted. They needed to eat. And, and, and just look at also another great illustration of what I'm talking about, about doing justly and, and fairly, is uh, look at the, the man that, uh, when we uh, speak of the scripture about uh, the, the Good Samaritan, you know, the Good Samaritan got hurt, and, and they was asking Jesus, who was the neighbor? And Jesus told him a parable about the Good Samaritan, how... The man fell among thieves, and the, the, the priest, they walked by and said, hey, I can't touch him, it's a holy day. And then there was another one walked by, they didn't want to be contaminated. But the Samaritan walked by, and which was a very profound statement which Jesus was putting out there because the Samaritans and the Jews didn't get along. And Jesus was just showing them that, that, that you know, though you may have some differences when you see your brother or sister in need, you have to be just. You have to be fair. And then uh, uh, when you see your brother and sister in need, you can't say, I'm not going to help them, at least I defile myself. Jesus ate among sinners. Jesus ate among publicans. He, was, he had the ability to rightly divide the word of truth. So it's not enough just to know the word of God. You've got to know when to apply the word of God. Amen? I can, I can be stern and hard on my children and tell them, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. You're not going to do this. And you're not going to do that. And cause them to hate holiness. Cause them to hate righteousness. Cause them to hate God. And the book of Ephesians brings that out. It tells the fathers not to provoke the children. So, so in, in your teaching them and training them, you've got to train them and bring them up, notice, in the, the admonition of the Lord. Bring them up in the nurture and care of the Lord. And know when to apply what scripture and know when to do what at a particular time. And that takes, that takes God, that takes skillfulness, that takes practice 
That takes walking with the Lord. Amen? I know that, uh, see now I'm getting off into one of my tangents, but I'm sure y'all got the point. But I remember even, uh, even myself growing up uh, uh, being, being stern and, 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 and holier than thou, you know, trying to keep a standard. My wife and I, we were laughing about it uh, uh, over our anniversary in, in the sense where, you know, I had nobody in my wedding unless they had the Holy Ghost, unless they was filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, because that, that's, that's what I thought the Lord required. You know, and uh, we can laugh about it now, but but when we look, but after we laughed about it, I said, I said, man, that was stupid. You know, that was a bad move. You know, what sense does that make? <laughs> you know, but that's that's zeal without knowledge. Amen. That's zeal without knowledge. So in our walk with God, God wants us to gain wisdom. God wants us to gain knowledge. And wisdom is simply the revelation of the Word of God. My God, the wisdom is simply the revelation of God's Word. Y'all hear me? Revelation is simply the revelation of God's Word. When God reveals to you His revelation of His Word, you apply it. That's wisdom. Amen? So God wants us to uh, walk justly. Then He wants us to love mercy. When he says love mercy, he wants us to show unconditional kindness at all times to all that are in need. When God talks about uh, loving mercy, he wants us to show unconditional kindness. That word unconditional means to anybody, anywhere, at any time. To show that kindness to anybody, at any time, anywhere, at all times. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So that means that including your enemy, that including your frenemy, that includes uh, your, your good friends, everybody. Amen? To show, to show kindness uh, and loving kindness to everybody and it's unconditional at all times. God wants us to do that. He requires that of us. Amen? And when I talk about God's requirement, it's a command. Amen? God commands this of us. Amen? It's not a choice. It's not an option. Uh, sometimes we think that, well, maybe I can get by doing what God commands and he'll forgive me and let me go. That's not true. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God, his eye goes to and fro in looking and seeking. God is weighing your actions every day. Thank you, Lord. You follow me? God, God is recording you every day. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, my God, I'm getting excited. Y'all got to forget old pastor. I feel good about this thing. Uh, he also wants you to walk humbly. He wants you to walk humbly with him. Amen. And that simply means conform your life to the will of God. God, when God talks about you walking humbly before him, he literally wants you to conform your lifestyle to his will. He literally requires that. And um, it's, it's, it's a good thing to know these things because it, it helps us in our walk with the Lord. And another point that the Lord wants me to bring out, and we're going to go to our Bible study on today, this is just my introduction because um, I want to wrap this series up and go to our next series. Is that the Word of God, God's Word? Uh, Jesus made this very profound statement, which he got out of uh, the Old Testament that uh, uh, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. God expects you, God expects you to live by his word. And what I mean by that is, God's word is God, are God's thoughts. And God expects you to ponder his word or his thoughts day and night so that you can apply them to your life. In other words, God, God wants you to think 
according to his word. Not come think according to your own thoughts. Your own thoughts will get you in trouble. God wants you to think, literally, process information according to the word of God. Sift all of your thoughts and ideas through the word of God. Let that be your filter. If, if, if it doesn't line up with God's word, your actions or what you're thinking about, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, you automatically reject it. You think according to God's word. And, and what I want to say about that is, is that in your daily life, God wants to be included. He wants to be included in your daily life. Now, some people may say, man, that's kind of basic, Pastor. What you mean? I mean, I know that. But people don't act like that. People don't respond like that. When people do things or make decisions, they make decisions according to their own knowledge. You have to literally stop yourself and say, well, what, what would Jesus do? What is the Lord asking me to do? What, what would the Lord require of me at this moment and at this time? What, what does the scripture say? What, 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 what have I been taught? What, what, what is the Lord saying? Huh? We have to, uh, uh, a lot of our decision making, if we would literally take it to the Lord in prayer first, if we would pray about it first, uh, the Lord would be able to direct our path. The Lord would be, would be able to direct our way. Amen. But sometimes, have you ever made some decisions, spurred a moment without thinking about it? Say, oh, man, I wish I'd have thought about it. I did it a different way. Uh, some decisions are costly. Some decisions are more costly than others. Some decisions you make, you pay for it years down the road. Amen? If you would have just simply stopped and said, let me consider, it would have saved you a lot of heartache. It would have saved you a lot of pain. God's word, the scripture as we, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself once again, is described as the perfect law of liberty. And what it means by the perfect law of liberty, that perfect means that it's been tried. Uh, it's been tested. Amen. It's been proven. Amen. Uh, uh, when I was in the uh, ROTC, we used to say, best by test, better than the rest. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And God's word is like that. Best by test, better than the rest. God's thoughts, God's ways, amen, have been proven, have been tried. And, and when we, when we uh, give ourselves to the will of God and to his ways, uh, uh, that's, that's what it means by being perfect. And then when it says it's the perfect law of liberty, it means it will always allow you to be free. Amen? I don't know. If you've ever been bound, thank you, Lord, and the Lord has freed you from a thing, uh, you probably rejoice and say, Lord, I'm never going back there again. Amen? If you've ever been entangled, if you've ever been bound by anything, and, 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 and the, the, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, uh, have made or set you free. Amen? that you would appreciate your freedom. And that's what the, uh, the Word of God does. It's skilled and it's designed to free you from all entanglement of the enemy, of the devil, and even of your own self. Amen? Hallelujah. So uh, let me move on real quick. Then uh, that, was, that was all up in that first lesson that we talked about. The second lesson that we talked about, we talked about last week, was God's commandments. Amen? That, that what God is requiring of you is a commandment. And then we talked about statutes. There are, there are specific times wherein God is requiring you to do a specific action. Amen? And, and we've got to 
uh, study and, and, and get the word of God, hide it in our heart to know when to do what we're supposed to do. Amen? Uh, uh, the perfect example of that is Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Jesus gives you the Beatitudes. And he tells you uh, 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 when you go into hardship and when trials and tribulation are come upon you, he tells you to rejoice, doesn't he? Be exceedingly glad. Am I right? He tells you that when you come up against an enemy uh, uh, God, and they desire your coat, your cloak, you know, he tells you to give it to them. He tells you to agree with your adversary quickly. Amen? Am I right? Thank you, Lord, while you're in the way with them. So if somebody's saying, hey, I'm going to take you to the law and you're wrong, you know, uh, work it out before you get to the judge. Because when you get to the judge, you're going to pay the other most far. That's what Jesus said. Am I right? And then, you know, when I was studying that, this is just a gold nugget. When I was studying that, uh, the, Jesus said in that particular setting, he said, uh, uh, when people ask of thee to borrow of thee, give it to them. And, you know, that, that, is, that scripture there has people wrestled with that down through the years. And then the Lord dropped it in my heart. Uh, we've got to put that scripture in the setting, in the context of what Jesus was talking about. And what he's literally trying to get us to see was, is that you, somebody may have a problem with you and they're talking about taking you to the law, you know, and uh, so there may be a little rift in between the two of you, but they're coming to you to have the audacity to come to you to ask you to borrow of thee. What Jesus is saying is give it to him, you know? And that goes in line with the scripture that says, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them drink. A carnal-minded person would not receive this. Huh? A carnal-minded person would say, oh, that's stupid. Huh? They, they, they clowning on me, I'm gonna clown on them. But, but you've got to look at the Lord. The long range of the Lord is, is reconciliation. The long range of the Lord is salvation. So, so God can take a bad situation uh, by you showing your light, by you allowing you to be the salt. Amen. He's able then to show forth your good works. And then that individual is able to glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen? That's how you've got to think according to the scriptures. Not according to your own mind, according to your own wisdom, but you've got to use the wisdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. My God, I'm getting excited. I'm, I hope y'all understand where I'm coming from. Amen. So, so, back to what I was saying is, is that the word of God is there for you to study and to, to show yourself approved, but to also to, so to you to get help to be able to rightly divide it. Amen? To know when to apply it at what time. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And God will lead you. God will guide you. Amen? God will help you. It's like you got children being raised up into your own house. Some children, you know, you can be more lenient with some children you got to be more strict with, and some children you got to be in between with. Amen? Why? Because they're different. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And you've got to know when to apply what at what time. Thank you, Lord. And that's, and that's what uh, God wants us to learn. That's what God being just means. That's what being fair means. Amen? So, as we uh, begin to uh, move on with our, our lesson on today. I want you to go with me uh, to the book of uh, St. James. Hallelujah. St. James. St. James. And we're talking about what doth the Lord require. There's 66 books in the Bible and James comes uh, after Hebrews, amen, James uh, being the brother 
of Jesus. Uh, he's actually the eldest uh, half-brother of Jesus, if you allow me to say it that way. And uh, James, uh, he, let me see, he, he, when he was, uh, when Jesus was operating and working in his ministry, uh, James, uh, the family members didn't believe. Amen. It wasn't until after uh, Jesus uh, was resurrected uh, that uh, his, his brethren, his family members believed in him. And they became so involved, uh, especially James and Jude. Jude is Jesus' brother as well. They became so involved that they became prominent in the church. Amen. They, 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 they saw what their brother went through. They, they believed on him and they got saved. Uh, uh, when, when people make a mistake, when people may not have faith and confidence, the main thing is, is that they turn their life around and give their all to the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So, James is a kind of in-your-face kind of guy. Uh, no nonsense. Amen? Now, I can see him at the dinner table uh, just being, that's my piece of chicken. And, 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 and uh, mom cooked that for me. Leave it alone. That's the kind of guy he is. You know, straight up, you know, to the point. And that's what this epistle is. Straight up, to the point. Some people like it on the rocks. Amen. Some people like it straight up. And that's James. James will give you two years straight up. Amen. So, so we see here then, um, we're talking, our subject matter is dealing with what doth the Lord require of thee? So our first three lessons we dealt with what does the Lord require of thee? And that's to, to, to love mercy, uh, justice, and be fair, and to walk humbly with your God. That encompasses all the will of God. That's God is requiring of that of you. And that is a commandment of the Lord. So tonight I want to talk about how, how to respond to God in obedience to what he requires. A lot of people struggle with responding to God in obedience to what he requires. Amen. Have you ever struggled with that uh, obedience? Have you all ever fallen short uh, in obedience? You know, you know what God requires. You know what God wants, but you find a disconnect to how, <laughs> how, how do I do this? How do I, how do I make this happen? You know, and uh, one of the main reasons, I want you to write this down so you can keep this in your mind. One of the main reasons why people fail to do what God has told them to do they know the word, but they don't internalize it. They don't internalize that word. In other words, they don't receive it into their hearts and make it a part of the fabric of, of their thinking. James says this, Receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. If you think of a graft, Especially a skin graft. It's, it's something that, that, that it, that's infused with the rest of your skin that becomes a part of your body. Amen? God's word has to be infused with your mind and become a part of the way you're thinking. And the way to do that, you've got to internalize that word. My God, my God, I almost forgot. Uh, 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 well, uh, uh, some other key points, but, but we'll hit them at the end. Uh, you have to internalize the word of God, and in order to do that, you have to be what the scripture says, it talks about it, that, that the beginning of, of, of wisdom and understanding is the fear of the Lord. And then it talks about 
how, how let not the word depart from your mouth. What, what, what that would sound like in the beginning is don't speak of the word of God. But what it's actually saying is you are talking and thinking of the word all the time. It becomes a part of you. When, when Jesus' disciples were, were, had forsaken him and they went to uh, the judgment hall, uh, the lady recognized one of Jesus' disciples. She said, because your speech betrays you. Amen? People should know that you've been with Jesus or a student of the word by how your speech is. Amen? Seasoned with salt. Seasoned with grace. Amen? Thank you, Lord. People should know that you are, have been with Jesus. Amen? All of you, I'm getting excited. Thank you, Jesus. And, and um, what also hinders an individual uh, from being obedient to the word. First of all, they don't internalize that word. They don't let that word become their word. Ooh, that's deep. They don't let that word, the word of God, become their word. Amen? Now notice, another way of hindrance is, is people have low self-worth. They fall short because they have low self-worth or low self-esteem. They don't think they, they, they have anger issues. People who don't follow after God's word have anger issues. Now there's multiple reasons, but these are the ones God gave me to give you. <laughs> so this must apply to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Frustration. Frustration. Being frustrated. That means you, you do what God has told you to do, but you don't get quick results. So you get frustrated. You, you've been in it, you're trying to do it, but you don't see any, uh, how can you say, it? you don't see any progress. So you get frustrated. The Bible says that uh, because the, well that deals with punishment. Because God doesn't execute his judgment expediently. The hearts of people are fully set in them to do evil. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about frustration. When, when you do God's will, you get frustrated. You get frustrated. Oh man. David uh, he was out there fighting that battle. And the enemy, while he was out there fighting, the enemy came and, and, and took his family, took his men's family, and they was going to kill David. Uh, that was a point where David could have got frustrated. He said, Lord, I'm out of here. I'm fighting your battle. And look what happened. You know, first of all, David, what, he didn't plan skillfully for that battle. He never should have took all the men. He should have left somebody behind to fight. You know what I'm saying? So, um, uh, hindsight is 2020. But instead of David get frustrated, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Anytime that you're feeling frustrated about God's will uh, being accomplished in your life, you've got to encourage yourself <laughs> in the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Work, work your way through it. Now, the other is pride. Pride. Folk don't want to humble themselves. That'll cause you to stop you from being obedient to the Lord. Pride. Amen? The other one is uh, lust. 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 Evil desires. That will hinder you as sure shooting. Uh, that will stop you in your tracks. Amen? And um, uh, those things will stop you from doing God's will. Now, I'm going to say this. Is that um, I can seemingly have the victory today over my self-worth, my anger, my frustration, my pride, and my lust. I can have the victory today. 
Huh? But, but, but I've got to keep the victory uh, on an ongoing basis. Amen? It's got to be ongoing. Thank you, Lord. And uh, oftentimes, when we encounter bad attitudes, when we encounter anger, when we encounter frustration, it comes from literally what we're thinking about, what we're meditating on. And if I'm meditating and thinking about negativity, it's going to bring those negative emotions and feelings. Amen? So I've got to, and you've got to be intentional about changing the way you're thinking. You've got to be intentional about, about, about what James is going, getting ready to talk about, count it all joy. Amen? And well, that's a good segue. Uh, we might as well get right into that. It says, James chapter 1 and verse number 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations. Uh, uh, James is saying is that when you find yourself in a pity party, when you find yourself going through trials and tribulations and temptations, and they seem to weigh you down, you've got to be intentional and rejoice and count it all joy. Give thanks and praise God for it. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, regardless of how you're feeling, regardless of what you're thinking, regardless of what it looks like, you've got to, got to, got to rejoice. You've got to, got to, got to praise your God. You've got to, got to, got to, got to give thanks. If you don't, it will overtake you. If you don't, it will overwhelm you. Have you ever uh, been sad? Say, man, man, I'm having a rough time. I'm, I'm going through. Thank you, Lord. It's nothing wrong with acknowledging those feelings, but you've got to turn that around. You can't just keep saying, I'm, I'm sad, and oh, my God, I'm having a rough time. You've got to literally rejoice. Amen? Give thanks to God. Praise Him. Amen? Be intentional. See, you may say to yourself, I don't know why I'm praising, but I'm praising. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But you've got to do that. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Notice then, when, when James says, my brethren, count. That means consider it. It's not joyous. Huh? But he says, consider it all joy. Count whatever you're going through, no matter what it is, no matter when it says count it all joy, and, uh, we get tempted by God, we get tempted by the devil, we get tempted by other people. Amen? And, and any one of those temptations, those are the main three. You've got to count it all joy. If you're being tempted by God, you got to count it all joy. If you're being tempted by the devil, you got to count it all joy. If other people are tempting you, huh, you've got to count it all joy. Huh? You follow me? Now, uh, God, when, when he tempts you, uh, I want you to go with me to Deuteronomy chapter number 8. I'm going to apply something my wife told me earlier. Uh, she told me, she said, now, because I don't get through all of my Bible class, and she said, well, you know, you ain't got to stick on one point all day. <laughs> Keep moving. <laughs> so, so um, I hear you, honey. I'm going to keep moving. <laughs> Sometimes I like to beat a dead horse. But uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Uh, this is the reason why God tempts us. God doesn't tempt us with evil. James is going to bring that out. Amen? God tempts us for his purpose and for his reason. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. 
Do you have it? It says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may what? Live, so that you can live. God's word is given to you so that you can live. And multiply and go into the possession, the land, go into and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way of the Lord thy God that led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. So God wants you to remember. Amen. Don't forget his ways. Amen. Don't forget that he brought you out in 1990 and he'll bring you out in 2020. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, no. He brought you through your wilderness experience to humble thee. This is the reason for God's testing. You need to write that down. God is trying to humble thee. He's trying to prove thee. Uh, to know what is in your heart. Amen. Uh, which he, whether or not you will keep his commandments or no. That's the purpose of God's testing. This is good to know. Amen. Because when we get to verse number three in James, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to connect. Note, note, verse number three in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter number eight. And it says, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Notice, God tested them. He humbled them and suffered them to hunger and fed them with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know. And this is the reason why. That he might know thee that way. That he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So when God tests you, he uses it as a teaching moment. God is training us. He's teaching us. So when you're tempted and tested by God, it's for teaching. It's for training. It's for instruction in righteousness. That you might be the man or woman of God thoroughly furnished, prepared unto every good work. That's why he doesn't want you to forget his training. Hallelujah. Your wilderness experience training is valuable. Peter says it's more precious than gold that perish, though it be tried with fire. Amen? Get that in your mind. Apply that in your heart. That when God tempts me, he's training me. He wants me to learn. And so, so I need to learn what God is trying to show me. Amen? And it's for my good. It's for your good. Amen? Now notice, notice the next verse. Uh, verse number four. He says, Thy raiment wax not, old, wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. So God was saying that I was able to keep your clothes and I was able to keep your feet, your body, amen, from swelling. Woo, sis, sister uh, Char Charlene, that's a good news to you, isn't it? <laughs> If your feet don't swell, praise God. <laughs> All right, verse number five. He says, Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so chasteneth the Lord, uh, so chasteneth, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. All right? So, so God chastens us because he loves us. Amen? So if he sends a test our way, we fail the test, and then we get chastened by it. Don't throw in the towel and get mad with God. Rejoice that you are a son and not a bastard. Amen? Huh? And receive your correction. And move forward. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so let's move on. I wanted to show you those 
points. Let's go back to James. All right? Now, when, when, when the devil, when the devil tempts you, what's his purpose? To kill you. Huh? Ain't it? To destroy you. To kill, to steal, and to what? To destroy. He wants to steal. He ain't after your possessions. He's after your position. <laughs> huh? He wants to steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your sonship, your position. Amen? That's, 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 now, when the devil is tempting you, that's what he wants to do. When people tempt you, they want to get advantage of you, to take away from you, so that they can consume whatever they're trying to get from you upon their own evil desires. The motive to why they want to deceive you is to get advantage over you. Amen? Now, let me ask this question. All right? You know that an individual is trying to take advantage of you. And how do you respond to that individual concerning the will of God? Thank you, Lord. And that depends. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Amen. Thank you. That depends. You see you, they weak and feeble, you pray for them. They, they come to you to confront you. You you, you you don't back down from them. You tell them what thus saith the Lord, what the will of the Lord. You look them in the eye and say, well, I see what you're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? But now, in your actions, in the way you treat the individual, you treat them fairly. You treat them justly. You see what I'm saying? You can, you can, you can confront them and, and, and tell them what, 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 you, that you recognize what they're doing, but in your actions and in your deeds, you treat them fairly. You treat them righteously. Like, though they're not harming you. Amen? Huh? Whatever they need, you help them out. You follow me? And then, like Deacon Fields said, you pray for them. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you. That's how God would want you to deal with your enemies. Amen? Uh, God makes his son to rise on the just and the unjust. Amen? So you don't withhold no good thing from your enemy. When it's in your power to do, you do. My God, we teach it tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, you do it. Now with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. My God, carnal minded person as we reviewed Last week won't receive this. They'll buck up against it. But a spiritual minded person, they receive it. Amen? Uh, when I first came into the church, as you all, when you first came into the church, you were all still carnal minded. We were all carnal minded. And I was listening to some principles the bishop was teaching in his Bible class. And I was saying, uh uh, that ain't right. Ooh, the women going to get you. Because they was telling them to respect and love their husband. I said, uh-uh, they ain't going to do that. <laughs> they going to get you, Bishop. And I'm sitting there waiting for them to raise their hand and sign off. Ain't nobody signed off. Ain't nobody said nothing. I'm like, ooh, there must be something to this. <laughs> Let me be quiet. Let me listen. You follow me? And, and as you listen and as you receive the word of God, your mind can be transformed. Your mind can be renewed. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, now, let's move on. Uh, James, chapter number two. I mean, chapter number one, verse number two, it says, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. And that, that word divers, as we know, means many. Temptations means tests. Amen? You're going to have many tests, multiple tests. Note then, um, uh, verse, uh, verse number three, what does it say? Knowing this, Knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience. 
Now, when you go into your test with an S on it, you've got to be armed with the knowledge of what we're just speaking. If it's God that's tempting me, you got to know the difference. God is trying to train me. If it's God that's tempting you, God doesn't tempt you with evil. He's training you. He's instructing you. He's correcting you. You got to go into every test with that knowledge. If it's the devil that's tempting me, all what the devil wants to do is kill, steal, and to destroy. So then you've got to know how to respond to him, which, the, which, which Paul says, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, you've got to internalize that word so that you can be able to be respond. And what I mean by internalize it, you've got to let the word become your thoughts. And then if it becomes your thoughts, it becomes your actions. And if it becomes your actions, it becomes your victory. Hallelujah. You'll be able to walk in the perfect law of liberty. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. Now, notice. Notice what James said. Knowing this, now, but knowing what? Know who is tempting you. And know what the proper response is. Hallelujah. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, huh? so your faith is what's being tried, and, uh, and when your faith is tried, it worketh patience, which means endurance. Amen? You've got to be able to endure every test. You've got to be able to endure every hardness, every trial, every temptation. Amen? And, and, and you knowing, this is deep here, you knowing who is testing you, it, it helps you to know how to respond and how to endure. You understanding who's tempting you helps you to respond to the test. And it helps you to know how to endure. All right? Now this again. He says, but let, verse number four, it says, but let, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go over. Let's go over then. Uh, to 1 Peter chapter number 2. 1 Peter chapter number 2. Because the scripture says that Jesus, he left us an example. And I want to show you this because he's the example that we have to follow because he was tempted in all points, just like you are, but the Bible says, yet without what? Amen. Sin. He didn't fall short. He didn't transgress. Notice what the scripture says. It says, for even hereunto were ye called. The Bible says you were called. That's key. God has called you. He's elected you. And some of my Bible scholars, I know you're already lining up in your mind that you realize that every test and every trial has been weighed by God. That there's no temptation that is taking you so much as such as common to man, but your God is faithful. Amen? That, that, that before it gets to you, God has already weighed it in the balance. Amen? Hallelujah. That, 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 that nothing can come upon you to destroy you. Nothing. Amen? Uh-huh. Yeah, when it says trying of your faith, it, it's almost like, you know, you ever, you ever talk to people and, and about, about Trump? And, and, and they're a Trump person. They get angry. Oh, yeah. They want to attack you, really. Right. <laughs> because you're trying who they have their faith in. 
Wow. And when someone attacks us, you know, as far as, you know, I don't believe in that Jesus stuff, you know, you know, hey, you know, and, and it, it bothers me. It hits you right it at the core. It hits you at the core, but you have to constrain yourself. Yeah. Right? I mean, you work in the church, you you ready to hit this stuff. But right. <laughs> if you learn to ignore them, right. and that's time to go on. To move on. Absolutely. Notice what he said. He says, for even hereunto were ye called, you were called, because Christ also suffered for us. Didn't he suffer for us? He says, leaving us an example, amen, that we should follow in his steps. Christ, Jesus, suffered for us. And he left us an example that we should follow after him. In other words, I should, I should go when I go through my tribulation, which work in spirit, experience, experience knowledge. Amen. Knowledge, temperance, and patience. Thank you, Lord. And 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 grace and peace is multiplied unto you. Through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I've got to line myself up with the with, with, with how Jesus lived. Amen. And and uh, uh, let's get into this real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, to Matthew. Shama, help me here, Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter number one. I'm sorry, uh, John chapter number one. John, oh, let me see. Wait a second. Oh, there you go, John. John chapter number 1 and drop down to verse 17. Notice it says, For the law was given by Moses, but note, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's why I got to follow in his steps. The law of Moses came to expose sin. Huh? You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. You're going to hell, you're going to hell. Huh? But Jesus came to explain it. Huh? To administer grace. To cause you to become, the, to get some truth. Uh, to know how to walk with God. To know how to live with God. Hallelujah, not being a critic. Hallelujah, but, 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 being, but being seasoned with salt. Uh, knowing how to, how, how to administer the word of God in the time and the need. Hallelujah. Knowing that uh, uh, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. Uh, that you can obtain mercy and find grace to help you in your time of need. Uh, yeah, yeah, I committed adultery. Yeah, I committed fornication. But don't stone me. Uh, uh, don't live in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, but let me get some grace. Uh, righteous man falls seven times when he gets back up. That kind of old shot. Hallelujah. And, and, and the truth is there is a friend uh, that's sticking closer than a brother. That kind of old shot. The truth is God so loved the world uh, that he gave uh, his only begotten son. Don't, don't cast me away. Don't throw me away. I'm an echo of old shot. Hallelujah. But let me come boldly to the throne. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, my God. That's why we got to follow Jesus' example. The, the woman that had the issue of blood. That come old shot. I feel like preaching now. <laughs> hallelujah. The woman that had the issue of blood by the law. When she touched Jesus, she should have been stoned, but grace stood up. Ah, but grace stood up. Look beyond all of her fault and saw her need. Why, why did she touch her? Man, why she just touched the hem of my God? Why she touched it? Because 
she had spent all that she had and she needed to be made whole. That's true. Yeah, that's grace. And when she touched the Lord, she was healed. The Bible says immediately the blood was stopped. That come on shot. Hallelujah. To, to give life. That's grace and truth. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Yes. All right. Now, I just want to get one more verse of scripture out of there. Hallelujah. Now, Hebrews, ah, go. chapter number eight. Hallelujah. I mean, chapter number five. Come on and give God a praise. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Amen. Though Jesus 
was the son of God, yet learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. In other words, Jesus internalized and learned from his trials and tribulations. And he learned how to apply God's word to every situation. He internalized the scriptures. And we can be all spiritual and say that he is the word of God. And, and we can say that. Amen? Because the scriptures say that. And, and But what they're trying to point out to you here is, is the humanity of Jesus. He being a son, having you to be raised by his parents. Amen? And, and raised in the word of God, searching the scriptures. Amen? Talking to, to doctors and lawyers. He, and, and being tempted in all points. He internalized and, and learned these things. Huh? Huh? We said, though he were a son, yet learned he what? He learned to obey. Amen? He applied God's word. We have to learn obedience. Sometimes, you know, uh, some people are smarter than we are. Uh, they send their dogs to obedience school. <laughs> I ain't calling you dogs, but some of us need to go to obedience school. <laughs> Don't stop me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You follow me? Know when to sit. Know when to speak. Know when, know when to run. Huh? And then some of them dogs are, tra are trained on special missions to find cadavers and bombs. And don't. <laughs> My God, we can learn a lot. Huh? We can learn a lot. My God. And, and Jesus learned by his experiences how to be obedient. That's what the scripture is saying. We have to learn through our experiences on how to be obedient. Have you ever thought about this? That Christian living is a repeat. There's nothing new under the heaven or under the sun. It's a repeat. Huh? If you haven't learned to give your tithes and your offering, you're going to have a repeat test. Huh? If you're not treating your loved one right, uh, you have a repeat test. Am I right? It's going to be a repeat. If you got the victory over this today, the enemy going to say, well, let me see about tomorrow. It's going to be a repeat. And you've got to learn from that experience. Amen? By what you're suffering. Y'all with me? I'm being slow right now to let that sink in. What have you learned? Amen? Some of you can get right up here now and teach this Bible class. Hey, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Having not uh, 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 studied the scripture, but look back over your life. Huh? Because your life is a living testimony of what God has taught you. Woo! Now I'm about to get deep. How you, how you have lived and how you are living is, is the grade level to what you have experienced. Wow. Wow. What's your grade going to be? Are you faithful? Oh, okay, okay. Let me move on. <laughs> Let me move on. Oh, hallelujah. Now, notice then. Go with me then. Um, I got I'm all, I got a little few more minutes. Go with me then over to Luke, Luke chapter number two. We're talking about Jesus learning. Hallelujah.
Luke chapter number 2. From his experiences. That he left us an example that we should follow in his steps. I got to follow Jesus. I got to follow him. We believe that today. Luke chapter number 2. Uh, Pastor Rico, verse number 40. Uh huh. And the child grew. Now, notice, we're talking about Jesus. He grew. And waxed strong in spirit. He waxed strong in spirit. Filled with wisdom. Filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. All right, so that's how he learned that obedience. Amen? He studied the scriptures. He lived the scriptures. He lived by the scriptures. He internalized. I can't, I, can't, I can't stress that word enough. Reason why people fail is because they don't allow God's word to become their actual way of thinking. This Bible was written so that you could uh, live by it. It becomes your way of thinking. You forsake your thoughts. You forsake your ways. Why? Because your thoughts are unrighteous. Your ways are unrighteous. You know, I was thinking, um, when Jesus came to be baptized of John. Yeah, come on. I mean, come on. <laughs> Let's go. When he came to be baptized of John, God directed him to do that. Right. But then John turned around and said, hey. Uh-huh. And, and they tell you, well, okay, I got to go. 
All right, we'll see you later. But you're trying to, you're trying to give them something. Have you ever done that? My God. And, and, and Jesus, he was showing us, left us in this example. Amen? That, that he was learning. He was receiving. Amen? And he was sharing also what he had learned and what he had received by his searching of the scriptures. You gotta search the scriptures. The, the scriptures, you gotta look at the scriptures as being God's thoughts. His thoughts. His thoughts. Amen. Amen. Alright, read what's that? Forty-seven. Uh -huh. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding. They were astonished at his understanding. And when they saw him, uh -huh. they were amazed. They were amazed. And his mother said unto him, uh -huh. Why hast thou thus dealt with us? Uh -huh. Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. Yeah. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. How is it that you sought me? Mm -hmm. Was she not that I must be about my father's business? Now, now Mary was correcting Jesus. Alright? And, and Jesus said, Well, how is it that you sought me? Don't you know I should be about my father's business? And I'm going to suffice it to say this. God dealt with him. God dealt with Jesus. God dealt with Jesus. His father dealt with him. You know why I say that? Read the first, next verses. What does it say? And they understood that the saying which he spake unto them. Uh-huh. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. Uh-huh. And was subject unto them. There it is. He was subject unto them. God dealt with him. Go ahead. Oh no, he didn't sin. That wasn't no sin. It was a misunderstanding. <laughs> Jesus was, he was there with the doctors and the lawyers, but he caused his mother and father to worry about him. He didn't sin. They were just worried. He wasn't so perfect, that's why they didn't try to find him before they left. The reason why. Back then, you got to think back in Israelite times. In Israelite times, uh, family was family. And they thought Jesus was with the cousins and all the other family going back. You know, it ain't like it is today. You know, so family was family. Everybody was together. So that's what they thought that Jesus was with the family and uh, with everybody else. So when when they found out that he wasn't there, the problem was, was that he caused his mother and father to worry about them. No, he didn't do nothing wrong. They, they were just concerned about him. He was caught up by doing the father's business. <laughs> he was caught up. Amen? And and, but he learned from that experience. That's what I'm trying to show you. He learned from that experience, and then he, he, he was subject to them, meaning I won't do this again. I see how it's affecting my parents. He didn't sin. There was no sin. But it's, it's showing you his humanity. Experience. That's a valuable lesson. 
Amen. To learn from your experiences. Amen. Hallelujah. This is good. We, I'm getting into y'all brain matter now. Absolutely. 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 Did y'all hear what she said? Mistakes are made so you can learn. So, in essence, what is she saying? You're going to make mistakes. Don't be afraid of making what? Mistakes. As long as you learn from them. And that's the way of life. That's the reason why there's grace. That's the reason why there's mercy. That's the reason why there's forgiveness. That's the reason why there's long suffering. That's the reason why there's love. Patience. Amen? Because we're going to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Right, we try not to make one. Exactly. Exactly. If a child is too afraid to walk, to learn to walk, and they know they're going to fall, they will never walk. Yes. That's just, you're just human. You're human. You're going to make mistakes. Right. Yes. As long as you're on this earth, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make it. You're never going to do everything right. Nope. But you try, but you're not going to do it. But you learn from it. Right. I, I'm going to tell you what I learned. That uh, God is going to, after we've done all that we can, he's still going to have to impute righteousness to us. Mm -hmm. He's still going to have to help us out. Amen. Huh? <laughs> Am I right? Thank you, Lord. Because you're going to be going through something as long as you're here. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's why never give up. Never throw in the towel. Hallelujah. Sister Lee? And God knows that we're human. Yeah. He knows that humans make mistakes. Yes. No how hard we try, we're going to do some wrong sometimes. Not intentionally. Not intentionally. But that's why God sent his grace and his mercy. Yes. Where's you? And we need God's grace and mercy. So when we make a mistake, God can say, well, I know the intent of his or her heart. Yes. And so he said grace and mercy to help us. Yes. So that, you know, that's why we have grace and mercy, because we're human. We're human. Exactly. And, and all this sense where uh, Jesus was get, uh, so caught up, uh, where he, you know, he uh, didn't think about his parents. Uh-huh. So caught up. People are talking to you next week and you never hear. Because your mission, your mind is to do God's mission. Focus. You, you're so focused, you don't even know what's going around. But yeah. You don't even hear. And then people are talking as plain as we are, but you can't hear them because you're so in tune. Yeah. What God is talking to you about. Yeah. And I suppose that's where Jesus I suppose that too. He was so in tune. Caught up. Uh, doing his father's will. He wasn't aware of his fear. Anything else. Anything else. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that what we should be? Yeah. So caught up. All right, we're going to cut it off. Uh, Deacon Phil. I was just going to say, uh, a mistake is not a mistake if you learn from it. Oh. But if you continue to make that same mistake, it is a mistake. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And as we ask uh, Sister Monique to come forward, we certainly do thank God. Uh, we want to have Deacon Fields take up our offering, an offering. Hallelujah. We praise her. This is a good Bible study. And, and you know, it looks like we're going to have part number four because I didn't finish it. Hallelujah. And so we certainly do thank God. And we thank God for our Facebook viewers that have listened to us on today. And I hope that you are able to glean something from the Lord on tonight. And as we get ready to pray, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you for this word. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for this Bible study. Lord, we are inspired. We are fired up. Amen. In the name of Jesus.